Why are friendships so difficult for me? Why do I have so much struggle and, and hardship in trying to make, maintain, and keep relationships with other people? I'm gonna talk about that this week from South Mississippi. This is 45 RPM. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Scott. Thank you for joining me this week on 45 RPM. If you notice, there's a little bit of an echo. That's because I'm coming at you from an empty room. I recently had my daughter move out and she's left this room empty and I'm going to turn it into a podcasting studio. In fact, if you want to help me name the studio, why don't you put a comment down there and help me come up with a good idea for it. I thought about uh, calling it the Body Slam Studios because uh, that was my very first podcast, but but what you see is just blank, empty space, empty wall. I'm gonna be painting it, I'm gonna be putting shelves on it, and then little artifacts and collectibles and things that I've gathered through my life, I'm gonna put on there, and lights and stuff like that. So hopefully it'll make a pretty cool studio whenever I get through with it to do podcasting for you. So you'll be able to see this as it, as it comes to life over the next few weeks and months. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about being an empath and how that has affected me as a person and how I deal with other people. I want to go a step deeper. I had someone ask me about being an empath and, and was that a supernatural thing? And here's what I discovered about that. As a Christian and as a believer, God has given me the gift of mercy. Now, it's one thing just to be an empathetic person, to, have, to be an empath or an empathetic person, which is a person who can feel, who has discernment, you know, in a secular sense. But whenever you are a believer and the Holy Spirit has indwelt you with the gift of mercy, suddenly it does become a supernatural thing. Uh, someone asked me, well, is this like being a psychic? And, and uh, is this like having this gift? And, that? and look, this is a spiritual gift from God that God has given me. And it's, it's, it's plagued me in a lot of ways. I have people tell me all the time, I wouldn't want that gift. I wouldn't want it. And though I say I'm an empath, that's really a worldly term. Whenever we talk about it in a spiritual sense, it's the gift of mercy. So let's call it the gift of mercy, not being an empath. That way it makes a little bit more sense, especially to us as believers. You can read more about uh, the gifts in Romans chapter 12. And, and Jesus even talks about blessed are the merciful. You know, it's, it's part of, 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 he loves me the way he made me. Being a mercy has given me some struggle in the area of relationships. Why? Well, First of all, you have a, if you have the gift of mercy, you have this deep, just longing and struggle to feel needed. You want to feel needed and wanted by people around you. You're driven to pray for them. Uh, people open up to you out of nowhere. You'll have people that will, that will message you. I have people that message me all the time from all, you know, I think I've got, I think I've got seven or maybe eight different forms of social media and it's constantly backed up with people sending me messages and asking questions and opening up to me and sharing with me um, things that sometimes blows my mind. Have you ever gone up to, you, you felt like you could really share something with someone and, and you could get deep with that person and you didn't know why because you hardly knew that person? Chances are that person has the gift of mercy. And God has given them that spiritual gift to be able to help people. We have get people with the gift of mercy have a drive to help others, have a drive to share God's love with other people. And, and we outcasts and people that that are rebellious, people that are on the fringe of society, people that are, are um, unusual, are drawn to people that have the gift of mercy because people with the gift of mercy readily accept people for who they are. They do. And that's part of the gift of mercy. But it comes with some things that cause struggle in your relationship. It comes with self-doubt. It comes with a poor self-image. It comes with... Um, the, the fact that that we want to run from conflict we don't like we don't like conflict so we will run from it we many times wear people around us out i remember whenever i became uh, part of sanctuary the guys in the sanctuary group and i became a part of that group for the first time in several years i had people that would listen to me and and so whenever i found the, that friend i found those friends i began to gush I began to just unload all the things that were coming out of, of my life and out of my experience of what I went through in the church and, and all these things, I began to just gush these things onto other people. Some of the people, and even the sanctuary guys, didn't really know what to do with that. You know, they didn't know how to, how to handle that because 
Suddenly here's this guy that they don't even know that is gushing. People that have the gift of mercy rarely forget. If you uh, have, have said something, if you have done something, I, I remember that. And I may not remember your name, but I remember how you've made me feel. I'm very good at determining whether someone is fake. And whenever I begin to make friendships with people, if I can tell that person is acting, if I can tell that person is holding back, if I can tell that person is not being real with me, I know it. And as a result, it's hard for me sometimes to put myself out there. Bottom line, we're skeptical because we, we see things that person may be trying to hide. That's what the people with the gift of mercy do. They overanalyze, they overthink. And as a result, they're afraid. They're afraid that if I invest myself in you, that one, you'll get tired of me and walk away. Two, you'll uh, make fun of me. You'll talk about me to someone else. Three, uh, it won't be reciprocated and I'll end up alone. Gift of mercy. I have all these people that I don't know that come to me with issues and problems and stuff and stuff and stuff. But as far as someone that I can go to, I don't have a whole lot. I've made a really good friend at work. I mean, this guy is a fantastic friend. Has nothing to do with style. He is very clean cut. He's the same generation as my mom. We have very little in common whenever it comes to the music I like, the movies that I like, the things that I do. But we both love the Lord. And as a result, we have become great friends. Great friends. Uh, my other friends are, are away, they're off. I don't have very many friends. As far as people that I spend time with, people that I honestly open up and share with, I don't have a lot of those people. So, okay, what about this struggle with, with making friends? What, have I, what do I do to overcome this struggle? Scott, you've shared with me all these reasons why you can't, what do you do? Well, what I have had to do in my life that, is, that has helped me more than anything is go back to a clean slate. I've gone back to an empty, clean slate in my life, and I've said, okay, and I've tried to learn about myself. All these things that I've talked to you about, they're, they're things that I've learned about me. They're things that I've learned about myself. And if I know me, then I know how to deal with me and how to talk and deal with others. Because now I have a clean slate, I can put paint on the wall, I can put shelves on, I can put gifts on the shelves, I can put things up to show you on this podcast, right? So it's that way in our life too. I have to go back through all the crud and make a clean slate. I can't project what's happened to me from other people in my past onto new people that come into my life. I have to have faith and trust that God is going to place people in my life that I need, people in the life in my life that I can that I can depend on, and I have to trust him with that. And even though my gifts are still real and I'm still using those gifts and I still analyze and think and talk and, and go into these situations with that gift in mind, I have to relax and start with a clean slate and, and understand that God may be trying to do something that I don't know and that I can't see. Just because I have the gift of mercy, just because I'm empathetic and I have discernment, that doesn't mean I know everything. And I have to understand that I'm not perfect but neither are other people. Other people aren't perfect either. And I can't expect them to be perfect when I'm not perfect myself. The best thing I can do in my relationships with others and, and, and with the, the struggle that I have with my friendships is to be a good friend myself, to be real, to be honest, to love people, to, to, be, to be one that will share the love of Jesus with other people. That's where it's all started. It, it all goes back to the clean slate of who I am. And, and even though that is run through a filter of, of, of the things that have happened to me and the gifts that God's given me, it still all comes back to the truth and the reality that God loves me and he will give me what I need. I may not have but one or two friends, real, honest to goodness friends, but they're real and they are honest to goodness friends. And even if I'm going through a season in my life, which I went through, I, went, I was in the wilderness for several years where I did not feel like I had any close real friends. I had people that I talked to online, people that lived off and would come by and visit once in a while. But even if I'm alone, I have a friend in Jesus. And, and that's what it, it all boils down to. Because he loves me, I'm okay. 
What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to him in prayer and be able to talk to him because he's the real friend. He's the one that will never let me down. And he's the one that is perfect, even though I'm not. Pray about your friendships. Pray about your relationships with the Lord. Give yourself a little break. Give yourself a little grace. Start with a clean slate and try again.